Uh, Welcome to the Exhorter podcast, where we aim to stir up love and good works through bite-sized biblical discussion. John, I think you've got our topic for today. Enlighten us. Enlighten you. Well, you know, I will. Thank you. (laughs) Humbly enlighten us, please. Humbly enlighten you. Um, You know, so I'm thinking about a, a verse right now, if we want to look at it. Proverbs 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And I'm just first curious, what do you guys think that verse is talking about? Well, I think deferred it was obviously in the future, you know, something you were. I think it was Tom Petty who said waiting is the hardest part. Yeah, I like that reference. I appreciate it. Amen. Uh, yeah. So, so deferred, I think, would push it off to the future. And uh, hope is, is something you're looking forward to. And, uh, yeah, I can think of several times in my life where I was looking forward to something that did not happen, and uh, and I was I was upset. I was upset about that. My my four year old does this, you know, regularly. She's expecting a treat or whatever yeah. after lunch, and then and then she doesn't get it, and she's like a wreck. She's oh, I wanted it, but the desire fulfilled is a tree of life. What do you think that? Oh. Well, it's it's unwrapping the present on Christmas morning. When it arrives, the anticipation has been great, but when it arrives, it's it's really good. Yeah, so it it's a very positive message, but it can also make you think for me, you know, doesn't mean that we should not have any expectations in life because we don't want our heart to be sick. You know, we don't want to be d- disappointed. And so maybe the reaction there would be maybe not have any expectations. I think Mary Jane said it best or said it very similarly, expect disappointment, not going to be disappointed at all. It- Spider-Man, Mary Jane. That's Spider-Man. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah well, you know. Clarifying. Marvel. Mar- yeah. yeah. Is, is her name Mary Jane, though? I thought it was just MJ, but I don't think it was it's Mary, Mary Jane. It's MJ. Yeah, you're right. It's not Mary Jane. So that's where we're going to stop. Or is we're going to Google to make sure. Yeah. It is MJ. <laughs> See, and this is but Her why, name is Mary Jane Watson. But this is why you guys would make excellent uh, film, film, film critics. critics. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have yeah, to yeah. The Exhorter Film Critic Edition. That would be a little less Biblical. Positive. So I've done this in my life where I've I've thought, hey, um, the best way to, to not be disappointed is to not have any expectations or to reduce my level of expectations and people and things. And I don't know that that's the best lesson to learn from here. Right. Um, it might it might actually work, but we all are going to be excited about things. You just talked about your child, you know, being excited for something. It happens. We have expectations all the time. I got really excited for the pluot. I just took a bite of, and then there was a little grub, <laughs> grub worm inside, so I had to throw it away. It always happens. And now I'm angry, but I also know I've got a fridge full of them downstairs. So as soon as we're done recording, I, I know I'll I'll just get another one. And well, what are so what are some expectations that you've kind of had in life that just didn't pan out? Oh my goodness! To, uh, well, it took me a decade <laughs> of, of, of in adulthood to find a wife. Like I did not want to wait 10 years as an adult. That's to, not the plan. Yeah, that was not. I was so frustrated and upset by that. Literally like, uh, you know, make literally heart sick right yeah. there. I can count times where I was like, oh, this isn't working out. Why? Um, and so, yeah, that was that was one of the major ones for for me was. Um, uh, find, finding a, finding a spouse and yeah. then, and then desire fulfilled as a tree of life. I love what I have now. You just had to wait for her 18th birthday. You can cancel. <laughs> <laughs> she was 18 when I met her and she had been for six months. That's staying in. Hey, hey, John, That's you clear. too. I'm I can stay in. I can count on several fingers here. Men in this congregation who robbed I- the cradle. I was just. I wasn't going to say. It, so. All right, okay. <laughs> I did the same. All right. You know, marriage is. It, it does involve compromises, and I, I wanted kids very early on. I got married at nineteen. You know, little different story than Nate. But then I had to wait ten years for kids. You, you know, things didn't work out. There were times where we both agreed, "Hey, eh, let's wait." There were times where I was like, "Let's have kids now." I don't want to be old when I have kids, but she didn't. Part of that's because I was 12 pounds when I was born, and I think she was scared. <laughs> yeah. I would scare anyone. Um, so, you know, we were married for about about 10 years before we had kids, yeah. and I, I wanted kids a bit earlier, but I'm not going to complain with the results. Yeah. I mean, so, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll tell them you're, you didn't complain. 
I mean, Nate, I, I, I kind of align and agree there, but I, you know, my expectations was I was going to get married at 21 and I was going to be married forever. Mm -hmm. Everyone in my family did as well. So I didn't expect to go through and be on my second marriage. I didn't expect for that marriage not to work out. Um, I think that that's very common. Relationships is a huge one for people. I expect and I want, you know, to find someone to be in a relationship. And um, when it doesn't work out, it, it just, it, the heartache, obviously mm -hmm. relationships and emotions and feelings, it's really close to this verse here, makes the heart sick. Um, even the deferred expectations, because we don't, we just don't know when it's going to happen. Even if we feel like something will happen, um, it's hard to see it. And so I think that relationships is a big one. I think um, it, this happens with jobs. This mm -hmm. happens with uh, education. I thought I was going to go in with this degree, going to go get that perfect job and start my life. Said everyone with an MBA, you know, or mm -hmm. you know, everyone with a bachelor's degree in college uh, thought, hey, I'm more ready for life. I, I think that that's, it's a very common thing in life. Those big milestones, those big pieces, every major decision you, you make, we have certain expectations that in hopes that will pan out. And, uh, and it doesn't always do that. So should we not have any expectations or how do we have appropriate expectations in life if we don't want to be let down or can we at all? My father-in-law used to, I remember hearing this from him the first time he said, Nate, the secret to happiness in life is low expectations. Right. And I scoffed at that the first time that I heard that pff, I was a younger man and maybe a little bit more proud. And, uh, I just thought, well, that's just a you know, well, <laughs> I think it was, I think it was the character, Michelle Jones Watson from Spider-Man No Way Home that said, if you expect disappointment, then you can never really get disappointed. Michelle Jones Watson. You really looked that up and that's correct. Yeah, MJ. It's, it's MJ, Michelle Jones. Yeah. Oh, wow. That Spider-Verse really sucks you in, huh? Oh, so where I was at <laughs> in speaking before Michelle jumped in there. Um, yeah, he, he said, uh, low expectations was, uh, the key to happiness in life. And I was very, uh, just put off by that, but I started to see some wisdom in that as life went on that, uh, having these grand expectations for things that are not necessarily godly, it sets you up for failure. Uh, and it sets you up for your heart to be sick. And so uh, I, I think there is some wisdom, not in having no expectations, but just in maybe not having high expectations for everything. Isn't it interesting how your, your parents' advice, sometimes with age and fermentation, it just becomes more profound over the years? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it happens all the time. I think that the whole... Uh, reducing your expectations. I think, I think it's half, half and half. I think there is wisdom in that where it's smart to just not have lofty, grandiose expectations of things that you don't have any control over and you don't really have any ability to, to impact or, but I also think that you can reduce expectations so low that you become cynical to life and people and things. Sure. Cause I've said that about people too. It's like, I expect people to act selfish and focused on self-interest. And so when they do that, it doesn't bother me. You know, I expect that. But it's kind of a cynical perspective of thinking about people, mm -hmm. you know. It's kind of like when I was a, um, worked in security, you basically looked at everyone who walked through the door as a potential thief. Everyone is a thief. You kind of have this negative perspective on people in life. And it's not healthy. It doesn't make you feel good about things. So having no expectations or low expectations could drive you that way. I think maybe we're looking for a certain type of expectations or expectations rooted in something that might help. Well, I think we all have expectations, whether, whether we really want to have them or not, or even realize that we have, I think we do have. Default, right. Yeah. Like default expectations. Like sometimes you sit back and be like, why am I unhappy right now? I guess I expected something. Yeah. Right? Like we were kind of like yeah. afterwards, we realized well, we had the expectations all along. And John, you and I talked a little bit about this earlier, but like uh, the disciples before uh, Jesus died, I mean, I think that they thought it was going to be an earthly kingdom and they expected that he was going to be an earthly king like, like David. And then he died. Oh, and, and I think it was Peter who said, uh, I'm going back to fishing. And uh, their expectation was that he was going to be an earthly king. He wasn't. And so the way... Uh, it turned out according to God's plan was much different than according to to their plan. And yet, uh, of course, it was it was better. 
I, I think it's important to interject the idea that we can have expectations of God. Yeah. And that's his faithfulness. We should have those expectations because we should have certain expectations of other people. I expect my fellow believers, my fellow disciples of Christ to behave a certain way. Now I understand I will be disappointed. And I, I was thinking of the end of, of second Timothy. This is possibly the last you know recorded letter we have from Paul. And he, he talks about uh, some basic instructions, you know, come to me quickly. Uh, Demas has forsaken me loving this present world. Uh, Kreskin's left for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me, but get Mark and bring him. And then he goes on to say, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. I, I imagine there was some level of disappointment in Paul, but he also balanced that with don't let it be held against them. You know, he, he manages expectations because in the very next verse, he says, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. I, I don't want to overburden my, my relationships with other people. I don't want to overburden them with the expectation that they will always be there for me and they will never disappoint me because they will. And that's where we need that grace and mercy. Don't hold it against them because I also know I have not always been there for, for Jessica the way I should. I've not always been there for my fellow church members as a preacher. You know, I can't be everywhere all at once. Even if I tried my hardest, sometimes it's just because I failed. There are other times where I simply can't be, you know, two places at the same time and I'm going to let someone down. So I acknowledge that I've let people down and I shouldn't hold it against when they let me down, but we should have every expectation that God is faithful and will will always be there and we can depend upon him and should expect that. And and that's a that's a valuable attitude to hold when especially when our expectations fail is knowing and trusting that what he has for us is better than maybe what I had expected. Uh, and I can look back on my life at those prayers that I made begging God for certain things, and then I didn't get them. So my expectation was I was going to get it, and then I didn't. But now what I have is so much better, I think, than what I would have had if I had gotten those answered prayers. Kind of reminds me of that Garth Brooks song, Sometimes I Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's yeah. hard to say that. I mean, I, I think you guys are right. I think unmet expectations is hard, but it, it's where we place those expectations. I, I think back also on um, David. And when David was wanting to build the temple, he was so gung-ho about it. He was going to do this work for the Lord. He wanted to build this temple. And he was told he wasn't going to be able to do that. He was told that his son Solomon would end up building the temple. Now, his heart was in the right place. He wanted to do this good thing for God, which is why when he wasn't able to do it, it didn't crush him, I think. I think that he he was motivated to like prepare for it. He was going to do everything but, no, I can't build a temple. Well, I'm going to get all the supplies ready. I'm going to collect all the materials. I'm going to help and love and support my son. I wanted to do this work. It would be easy for him to get self-focused and, and to look down on what he wasn't able to do. But he decided, I'm going to support the work and what was going to happen for Solomon. And I think because he it was all rooted in wanting to fulfill God's will, that he didn't have soul-crushing unmet expectations. I think that when we place our expectations in serving God, uh, we place that at the forefront, at the root of the, the decisions and the things that we hope for in our lives, that if we start there, we're not going to be disappointed at all. So so it seems like as you're talking there that uh, David was more focused on the effort than necessarily the outcome, the outcome being the temple, the effort being, you know, everything that went into making sure. it. And so maybe that ought to be what, what our expectation is. I expect that I'm going to work hard on service to God, that I'm going to work hard to serve my brothers and sisters. Uh, or or spread the gospel with others, but uh, it's uh, the outcome is not necessarily up to me. What's up to me is is the effort that I put in, and in that I should have an expectation that I am going to put in as much effort as I can. Yeah. So, for example, if there's a brand new job I I got, and I'm looking at this job as a means to um, fulfill my duties as a husband to provide for my family. Well, what if the job doesn't pan out, or I get fired, or laid off, or something happens? If my goal and focus in life was expecting to be fulfilled through that job, then I can be crushed. But if my goal was to glorify God through my life and being the person I need to be, I'm going to sit back and realize there's going to be another job. It's the income from a good work that I need to be focused on, maybe not that outcome 
of that job. And I kind of felt that in the last year when my job switched and I was really focused on what I could do with this one job. And uh, I think that it, I was expecting that and I, it was easy to get crushed. And it was 10 years of expectations, but realizing what my family needed from me and what my God needed from me and what I needed to do as a man, you, you seek out the other opportunities to fulfill that need. Sure. Uh, Nate, you mentioned earlier that, you know, your daughter would cry or, you uh-huh. know, didn't have the expectations. How do you, how do you console or deal with your kids um, or people around you when their expectations are not met? How do you help them work through that, that pain? Because it is a pain. I mean, you can see it all yeah. over their voice yeah. and their face and everything. Uh, they, they're, it's tragic. Their world yeah. is crumbling because we didn't get to X, Y, Z kind of yeah. thing. Well, uh, w- with my, with my kids, I don't know if this is what you should do with other adults but with my kids i uh, i try to empathize oh you know it, it hurts when when we don't get what we want huh yeah it does um and then and then i try and put my my vulcan hat on and uh, be a little bit logical and just ask some questions well why Vul- vulcan ears vulcan ears <laughs> vulcan ears yeah, i point. those vulcan hands <clears throat> the pointy ones live live strong and prosper Live long. Live long. Yeah. No, it's lift. Prosper. Lift. <laughs> lift. Lift strong. Lift strong. Lift. Oh, lift <laughs> strong. Yeah. Right. Okay. I can get on. Well. I, well. I can get. I can get on board with that. Um, but uh, so I, I try and empathize with my daughter, but then I also try and be um, logical about you know well why are you feeling the way that you're feeling what what caused that and and what can what can we do now to to help you get closer to what it is you were you were hoping for or or to change your expectation. Similarly with my kids, a lot of times it's kind of walk through and find out what they were expecting and then be like, well, why were you expecting that? I didn't yeah. say you could go do that. Yeah. My kids all the time, well, so-and-so got a soda. I'm like, well, I didn't say you could have a soda. You know, yeah. that kind of thing is walking them through the process of having them understand what their expectations were. That's like a big one. Sometimes you have expectations you didn't even realize. Yeah. Sometimes just walking through that process of identifying what that expectation was can help you look back and go, well, why didn't I expect that? That was ridiculous. What a, uh, a great question to ask yourself at the beginning of any, uh, you know, major undertaking or even just, uh, I don't know, the beginning of the day, what am I expecting yeah. out of this? So that way, at least uh, you'll understand why you're disappointed if things don't go that way or happy when things do go that way. It's because, oh, well, that's what I expected to happen. Nay, I like how you just said that as far as um, just, before any major effort and things in life to stop and think, Hey, what do I expect to happen from this? And I think that that gets into even our, one of our other episodes about gratitude is just understanding um, what am I hoping for? What, 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 what will make me content in this? Typically where I get into trouble is when my expectations become uh, self-focused Oh yeah, and it becomes what, what did I want to get out of this? And I lose sight of the bigger goal of of glorifying God. And, you know, a text, I'm always reminding myself of this one in Philippians chapter two, where Paul tells us to have the same attitude that was in Christ. And he says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. It's that last phrase that when I start to wrestle with my expectations not being met in a situation I ask, am I placing my needs or my wants or my expectations above someone else? And then I need to tell myself they are more important than me. And that that's the end of it in my mind. They're more important. Well, and so where are our, our initial expectations coming from? Um, is it is it coming from the things that I want or is it coming from the things that that God would have me to want? Uh, because as we're having this conversation, I'm reminded of Psalm 37, 4, and I've brought this verse up in the past where it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I had a, a wise preacher tell me that it, it's not that he's going to give you all the things that you want, but he's going to place within your heart the desires that he wants you to have. Uh, and and I think that that transfers over to expectations. Uh, if if our delight is in the Lord, if our focus is on what he wants, then our expectations should be in line with what am I expecting of this situation? What would God have me to expect of this situation or of myself or others in this situation? When we have expectations rooted in God, in God's word, in, in God's hope for us and plans for us, 
uh, we are not going to be disappointed. But when we place our expectations and people around us, we do have a potential to be dragged down when those expectations are unmet. So there's three things I have just listed here that I think that will help us as we interact with others, spouses, coworkers, you know, brethren, kids, everything. And when those expectations are not met, how might we respond? And the first one is communicate. Most of the time where those expectations are unmet, it's because you haven't communicated those expectations Mm -hmm. to someone. And when you haven't really taken also the reflection back that you yourself are fallible. James 3 verse 2 says, for we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. Okay, so that's a little snarky there because the whole point is, is we're all fallible. We all make mistakes. So give that grace to people um, and communicate back and forth when those expectations are not met. Don't respond abruptly when uh, you're shocked that those weren't meant, especially if you haven't communicated what you're expecting. Well, and how many times have you not met somebody else's expectations? That always helps me when I'm upset uh, with somebody else about them not meeting whatever expectation I had that I didn't communicate to them uh, about how many times I've done that to them. Um, and, and that kind of helps me come, come down off of my, my high horse and, and uh, adjust to not having that expectation met. Well, getting back to your illustration of David and Solomon in the temple, what, what is it that David did when he was told no? You are not the guy to build the, the house for me. He burned it down. Or just the opposite. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. He remembered that it's not about him. The mm-hmm. bigger goal is about building a house for God, building a place where all of Israel could come together and know that their prayers would be heard by their God. And so he got out of the way, but also he did everything he could. If he wasn't allowed to build it, he did everything he could, gathered all the supplies, made all the plans, made as many arrangements as he could to make Solomon's job easier to be the one to build the temple. And so he just recognized that it's, a, it's not about him. His expectations were that he would build a house for God, but ultimately he recognized whether it's me or my son, as long as the house gets built, I'm happy with the objective. And so he wasn't focused on David's expectations. He was focused on what is the goal, building a house for God, and I'll do whatever I can to glorify him, yeah. to accomplish that. So we have first communicate. Don't have assumptions. I mean, that's the that's the key that kind of goes with that. Don't assume they know what those expectations are. Mm-hmm. Um, so reduce that. And then next, forgive. You know, if Jesus could forgive the men who called out, crucify him on the cross, I think we can forgive loved ones and friends who do not fulfill those expectations for us. Um, so have that grace and understanding that we are fallible and the the person who has the most reason and cause you know, hold a grudge out there because of those expectations he forgave on the cross. Be forgiving. So with forgiveness, obviously the reason why he was able to forgive those people who said crucify him is he had love for them. He had because love in he his didn't heart. want them to go to hell. He didn't want them to go to hell. He had love for them. And we know that love is patient. Love is kind. It does not insist on its own way. First Corinthians 13. So understand those things. Just communicate forgive one another because we are to love one another and uh, we are not to seek our own, our own way. Uh, I, I think if we do these things, we'll, we'll kind of mitigate some of those, the bad communication and bad relationships that we have and just a lot of the struggles we have day to day. Well, and when you get out of the way, you, you can start to see some of the blessings. I, I think I've used this in an episode before, the idea of collateral blessings. Yeah. You know, collateral damage is unintended destruction, but sometimes there can be unintended blessings. and Maybe this situation didn't go the way I wanted, but if I can get over myself and get over my disappointment, I can see how, well, maybe I didn't get what I wanted out of the situation, but a dozen other people benefited from the way it turned out. And I can be very glad for that. You know, and sitting in those negative feelings really doesn't get us anywhere because uh, for certain circumstances, we literally cannot change the circumstance. So we can sit in our negative, bitter feelings. Things didn't go the way I wanted to or how I expected, but it's not going to change the circumstances. And if the circumstances aren't going to change, then the thing that has to change is what we expect or what we want. Bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping it hurts somebody else. Yep. Yep. I've heard it said it's like putting your head underwater and hoping the other person drowns. 
Just not. These are like <laughs> it's a very violent. <laughs> we were talking about uplifting episodes, yeah, right? I know we wanted yeah. to uplift, but exhortation. Yeah, yeah we we're exhorting you. But John, you you were talking about love, and maybe that should be our expectation: is that in every situation we will love God and we will love others, regardless of what the outcome is. We just know that okay, I, I can fo- I can control what I do, and my job is to love God and to love others. Hopefully, everyone can listen to an episode like this and just kind of do a quick evaluation and kind of like a reset. Before you go into the next day and conversations and relationships in life, go through that mental process of making sure that you're having expectations from the other people. You're going to give them love and it's going to be reciprocated back. And uh, if not, um, give them grace. Yeah. Don't also use this as a weapon. <laughs> like you could use it as a weapon. I'm thinking like with a spouse, it'd be like, well, I didn't tell you I was going to unload dishes. I don't know why you expected that. You, know? <laughs> you could easily probably do that because sometimes we know people's expectations of us. Yeah. If, maybe they're not stated all the time. If you're a husband, you know, she's going to expect you to like take out the trash or do different things. Yeah. Like there's certain things that we kind of expect each other to do. And if it's not like stated that don't use that as a weapon to say, you know, you didn't have the right expectations. We didn't yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Um, you have to communicate better. Don't use that as a weapon too, because another great podcast title that we could do con- comes from a sermon, Kyle, you did today, which is on um, sin. And there is the sin of omission, right? When you know something is the right thing to do, but you don't do it. You can do that with expectations. So you know someone has expectations on you to fulfill a certain need or do something, and you don't do that. Um, that's on you. Yeah. It's on you to do that. So, Well, thank you, John, for that insightful conversation today. That was a really good topic to discuss. Uh, can I ask a few things of you, the audience? If you found this episode to be enjoyable or even beneficial, would you consider clicking like uh, or even subscribing to our, our channel on whatever platform you're listening to podcasts on? Uh, another thing I'd, I'd like to ask you to do is uh, if you wouldn't mind following us on Instagram or Facebook, get the latest uh, up-to-date information on what's going on with the Exhorter podcast. And finally, uh, we'd love to hear from you uh, in the comment section. Please give us your feedback. Thank you so much for listening today. And we're excited to be back with you next week. We, ex- we, expect, expect, you. <laughs> we expect that you'll be we here. We expect you to be here. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about a pluot and how hot I am in here. Like I'm, I'm mentally stuck on those two things. You don't even have to do anything after this, Kyle. Literally, just coast. He's like, yeah, but truly, it is Friday afternoon. It, we, we prompt you better. I'm dealing with that expectations thing right now. <laughs> You're expecting to not be 83 don't degrees. Change your expectations, John. What did you expect from this episode? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> I, 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 I met. <laughs> what did we expect of the man from Sanger no, today? I, no, I. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm no, just, just gonna you guys are doing great. Just keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make him mad. He's bigger than me. Well, thank you for that insight. <laughs> Was that my cue? I didn't. You, you use whatever cue you want. We're good. All right. But it has. But you have to put some thought into this. Don't somehow just don't include, just close it out. Somehow include the words. Yeah, you can't just close it out. You what do you think I was doing it. over here, quietly thinking? Uh, perfect. Expectation perfect. and omission. Go. I think. <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, thank you for that very insightful discussion today. Can I ask you, the audience, to do a couple things for us? If you like this episode, will you go ahead and let's see. Sure. Like, no, no, I, I had it worked out in my head. I need to write these things out. I expect you to, you should say, well, sorry about it, man, expectations. We, we expect, expect you to share this with your friends if you love it. Yeah. And if not, we know. <laughs> All right.